Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, finally, I'm getting around to making this uh, this final update for my Detonate Dead Black Flame build that I've been playing on stream a lot. I use this build for farming pretty much anything and everything. It's at level 98, just because I can't be stuffed getting it to level 100 yet. Um, this can do pretty much most content in the game. The only thing I, I wasn't able to do, and I could if I threw more currency into it, was uh, Ubers. That was it. So it can blight, it can delve, it can do legion. Uh, can't do five ways. Not made for that, but it's good for farming. Whatever. Um, it can do uh, abyss. It can do breach. It can do pretty much everything. It can map. It can do maven crucibles. Um, <clears throat> couldn't do level thirty simulacrums. It needs more defense, though. It's pretty defensive as it is. Got two hundred sixty-seven thousand effective hit pool. Um, now, the POV as well, and I'll show you what it looks like pretty much now, actually, but let's just pull it on screen. Now, it does look a bit odd that it's only 500,000 Ignite Dot, and the reason for this is the way that Detonate Dead scales off of Corpse Health, and I just, I'm not as good as other people probably are at retuning this to get that to work. Um, actually, we have Consecrated Ground as well. Anyway, um, yeah, so if you want to muck around with that, you can. Uh, otherwise, this works for me as it is. Now, I do need to put a bottled faith into this build. So we'll just grab that and chuck it in the tree for the fun of it. There we go. And enemies are on consecrated ground then. So you do a little more damage and more regen. Anyway, moral of the story, as it stands, this build is just ridiculously tanky ridiculous like it, it's just great at everything basically it's an all-rounder build um you have seen on the b-roll it does full screen um uh pops chaos pop and i'll explain where that's coming from pretty much run through the ins and outs it does use wither totems to apply stacks of wither which is really cool um <laughs> overall price like void of you know everything probably about 30 div total um and i'll do a bit of a price breakdown in the description on the video as well um, so yeah, like, cost-wise, it's pretty cheap. It's a OG Aegis Aurora build, you know, Aegis Aurora being this kick-ass shield here. And I don't have anything special on the tree. I actually don't have anything good on the trees for the item, though I could probably do that if I so chose to. So, um, yeah, it's a really, really good build. So yeah, let's get into it. I'll talk through the mechanics and, uh, we'll have a look and see what the configurations in the POB are to give you a bit of an idea where things are coming from. Now, for anyone else who wants to understand a bit more about Black Flame, it's literally a ring. And mechanically, all Black Flame is, is it takes your Ignite. So you scale Ignite as you would on any other Ignite character. You apply the ring and it converts your Ignites to do chaos damage or, um, of fire damage from Ignite. So your Ignite still scale with fire damage Ignite. Um, but then it converts it to chaos through the ring, sort of, if you want to look at it like an order of operation sort of thing, and applies chaos damage over time instead of fire damage over time, thanks to the ring. Also, wither stacks don't deplete as well, so once you stack up wither, it's permanent if you've hit it with black flame. So, another really good reason why this build is really good, and way better than, I would say, way better than normal ignite, but... <laughs> You know, different use cases, different people have different preferences. Anyway, let's get into the build and let's talk about the mechanics of the build. Okay, as per normal, I like to talk through the POB just so that there's no bullshit going on here and people are like, how the hell does this work and where does this come from? So I do use Val Detonate Dead quite often. So I have Val Detonate Dead in this build and I think it's only level 20. So it does like a million dot and then that scales with the enemy health as well or corpse health. So that can go exponential if you're doing something like Delve, which is why it just cleans out Delve at like 600 plus pretty easily. It just needs a bit more defense. Um, if you threw a Mage Blood on this, honestly, it just would become almost unkillable. Um, so anyway, configuration. How does this work? What's it all doing? So, all right, Major Gods. So your Pantheon. So Lenaris and Aberith. Aberith because of the Burning Ground rips through Energy Shield because this is a seek. This is a Chaos Inoculation build. So we are Chaos Immune, and it is a max block build. Now, there's one other thing that's not ticked in here properly. And, 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 and it is this, because we have normal discipline. It's actually close to 289,000 effective hit pool. So, um, <coughs> we have that. 
No other changes here. Frenzy charges. Now this is actually coming from our uh, cold snap setup. So we have cold snap on cast and damage taken and the effect of cold snap is where there's a 25% chance to gain a frenzy charge when an enemy dies in the skills area. So that's how we get frenzy charges and that usually happens pretty consistently in Delve in particular because you're always taking damage. Endurance charges. Now this is an interesting one. Where this comes from is actually coming from... Oh, I don't know why I went down that way. Uh, it's actually coming from the Red Dream, which I've never really used in any other builds, but it you gain 7% of fire damage, and this can be up to 10% as extra chaos damage, so it scales up your chaos damage. Also, if you take these nodes here in Faith and Steel, because it gives you elemental resistance, you get 8% chance to gain an endurance charge on kill, and you end up generally capping out your endurance charges, which is really good. So a really good <coughs> mechanic to use, basically. Um, to get further buffing, more armor, or more physical damage reduction, and to get your reses over the uh, over your cap as well, and to get more regeneration of energy shield because we use Zealot's Oath on this build. Um, outside of that, we have flash charges up, no effect. Nearby corpses, I always I always have this stacked up as ten because of Lenaris. Um, realistically, it doesn't really do anything aside from mana regen, but it does apply because you know reasons, and also this will work because of the Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame Jewels in this build for Essence Glutton as well, which basically scales up um, your regeneration rate based on nearby corpses near you. And you'll also have corpses always near you because we're using Corpse Walker. So, you know, you literally run around and you have dead bodies all around you. So that'll also do it too. Um, so on Consecrated Ground, this just synergizes with Bottled Faith. Like this just changes your regen slightly and it already has gratuitous levels of regen. Um, <coughs> nearby enemies, 10, yep, uh, this, this scales with Lunara, sorry. Have you killed recently? Generally in Delve, yes, but all it does is energy shield regen. Have you been hit recently? In Delve, this is max blocks, so you're always going to get hit. Um, so, it, this just buffs you up. The more hits you take, the more damage reduction you have. I have Convergence tick, because when you verse, like, a rare unique enemy, it'll apply. And it's not like a perverse, uh, issue anyway, it just buffs you up against bosses. Now... Highest damage, I'm leaving on default. Consumed a corpse in the past. Like, we're always consuming corpses. It's how we cast and how we actually do damage. So, that's all G. No other changes here. Um, because there are, like, no other stupid stats or anything like that. Uh, Guardian and Pinnacle boss damage, obviously. Uh, so that it's tuned up. And then nothing else changed here. Withering stacks, we have 15. And the way that we proc withering is with a um, couple of wither totems. Sorry. So we can have up to three Wither Totems and then they basically just faster cast and get up to like 15 stacks in no time. So that's actually really easy and I have them up constantly. We hinder enemies. Um, so yeah, that's on, but really like, yeah. And that actually comes from... Comes from up here potentially. However, uh, should that not apply, it also comes from your Void Sphere. So I'm pretty sure enemies in range are hindered. So that's where that's coming from. And that's always popping. If you've watched my streams, it's always going off. It's actually a really good defensive skill. Um, Ignite, obviously, we're an Elementalist. So yes, we have Ignite. Um, always Shaper of Flames. Always, hits always Ignite. So we always have Ignite. And we also have Shocks uh, because we also have Shaper of Storm. So we always shock as well, which gives us a huge damage buff. Uh, cold ex uh, fire exposure doesn't work on this build, so you don't need fire exposure on your gear. Originally, I had that. It doesn't do anything. Um, I have another thing else here ticked because it doesn't apply. Like, you could have various stats, but it doesn't really apply. And also Consecrated Crown because I just uh, threw in a Bottled Faith just for good measure in here. So that just amps up your regeneration further. If you... Or it amps up your, your damage to enemies further. Sorry. Um, that's basically it mechanically. It's not like an overly complicated skill. And then when you are versing like bosses where you have to zone them away from you, you literally just drop your Desecrate and then just pop your um, <laughs> bloody Detonate Dead. And that'll do the trick for you and have you with the totems up. But it's really an easy build to play. So anyway, let's talk about gearing. Okay, gearing wise. So there's a few mechanics in here that you do need to pay attention to because this is a mechanically complex build by nature. But anyway, let's talk about it. So basically you need a Verides Veil and I'll explain further as we go, but 
what this allows you to do, you do run one magic ring, which um, means damage of hitting enemies is unlucky while you have a magic ring attached. Oh, right, equipped, sorry. So you get damage reduction from this. You also hexproof, hexproof if your magic ring is in your right slot and you take no damage from critical strikes if it's in your left. So depending on if you're versing a boss, you can switch it around um, based on needs, basically. So if you're versing all, you just switch the ring slot and you, you can't be crit on. For example so it's a pretty good mechanic um the other advantage of rudy's veil uh two to level a socket of gems um or resist and i have the detonate dead enchant as well and if we have a look at that it was like yeah i've got all white sockets it was like one or two divine tops so pretty cheap i double crafted this and got all white sockets i just completely lucked out but you don't need that it's not necessary it's just too red too blue um Pardon me. In the wand, I've got damage over time, and it's a convoking wand, by the way. Damage over time, I've got increased minion damage and fire damage over time. This is not the best wand that you can get. And I also got some really good stats here, too, with um, minions deal extra damage and able to steal power frenzy and endurance charges as well. The reason why you need minion damage, and I played around with this, is that minion damage scales with the corpses and that increases your overall damage if you had burning damage in there burning damage does not do as much damage scaling as minion damage it'll still work but it's not as good um at least that's what i tried out and i played with it in pob and i tried a couple of different ones which um my offhand here i did actually try 90 percent burning damage and whatnot um it just was nowhere near as good as this setup here here so that's what i ran with as far as one so if you get anything similar to this it'll work fine and if you get a way better tree and the options are endless for you with this then yeah you can do that easily um in my uh in my shield is just an aegis aurora i actually got a really bad aegis aurora on this so you can get a way better aegis aurora this actually cut the armor down so this could be like over 300k ehp um but i was just too lazy to change it out and these are like 60 to 70 chaos right now they're dirt cheap like 80 chaos dirt cheap um and this one how much price was uh, a bit hard to price this type of one yeah anyway i'll let you guys figure it out um yeah they're like 100 and something chaos probably 150 chaos tops um all right so amulet i have eternal struggle the reason why i use eternal struggle and i got really good implicit roles on this is for the 13% increased global defense, also all attributes is really good. I balanced out my strength and my decks with this. Um, <coughs> pardon me. On top of this, kill enemies that have 15% uh, or lower life on hit if Searing Exarch is dominant. Which basically means it just culls enemies with 15% life or less. So, uh, basically, if you're Searing Exarch mod, and in this case mine is exceptional versus lesser on my um, Eater of Worlds mod, that will apply, and so I just absolutely eviscerate enemies, and then that procs my um, Chaos Pops and Bob's your uncle, done. So, your annoyed on this as well it needs to be Charisma, so you have enough mana left in your pool. Now, best in slot chest is just Incandescent Heart, and by the way, this is pretty cheap. Um, incandescent Heart, and these were like 2 div, I think I bought mine for. Um, the reason why this is really powerful is not for any other stat on here, like it's got good armor and ES number 1 and 2, However, 25% of elemental damage from hits taken uh, as chaos damage. And because this is a chaos inoculation build, we are completely immune to chaos damage. If we check defenses, chaos resistance, immune to chaos, yes. Which means 25% of your inbound elemental damage is just completely thrown in the garbage. You don't even take it. So couple that with Aegis Aurora, which gives you ES on block, 2% of armor as ES on block. It's a really tanky combination to run on any build, which is why I'm running it on this build. Um, next, the two rings that you need on this build in particular are a magic ring with despair on hit. Now, if you're going to craft this ring, which is what I did, all I simply did was getting was got a really, really cheap hunter ring, a hunter influence ring. Um, and then I just alteration spammed until I got spare on hit. That's that's all you need to do. It's that simple. There's nothing else. You don't need to buy it for one div or whatever it's selling for. Um, probably cheaper now. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, like five chaos. Like five five chaos to one div, whatever it is. I got this a little earlier in the league. So um, 
yet, but otherwise you can craft it yourself really easily. And then Black Flame. And we don't even need the Chaos Res on Black Flame, it's just a, an advantage, but basically it's uh, enemies ignited by you take Chaos damage instead of fire damage from Ignite. You still scale fire damage as per normal, do not scale Chaos damage. Um, however, it gets rid of the issue with the new mob. Um, there's a new mob modifier that uh, basically nullifies the effects of Ignites or they're, they're you know, less effective. This just rips through those enemies like they're nothing. So, yeah. Uh, none of the other stats mean anything except for the fire resist on the ring. And Withered does not expire on enemies ignited by you as well, which means that Withered is really, really effective on enemies, which is why I use it. Um, next in the gloves, I do have fire exposure on hit. That can be changed out for anything. So that's a, a lost opportunity on my end on either a world. So you can put anything else in there to make that better. Um, I just got like high ES gloves, dexterity, <coughs> all reses where I need it to basically cap out reses and just stack as much ES on there as possible to push my pool over 5,000. Um, my boots are corpse walkers and the enchant you want is 80% chance to avoid being stunned if you've killed recently. You really need this down in Delve. Um, and basically this is how we have corpses springing up around me. And then my belt, it could be a way better belt, but it's actually a pretty good belt. Um... It has like 48, 42 to 48% of each resistance, and I use my belt to basically stack out reses. I haven't even qualied, qualified this belt, so I could, and I could get an enchant on this belt as well from, uh, was it uh, Offering of Dedication from um, the, for Uberlab, but I haven't done that either. So there's a lot of areas where this build can be improved. I just, I'm too lazy to do it. Um, so Void of the Tree in the POB, I also have a uh, Sulfur Flask in here which gains charges when hit. Um, I've got a Granite Flask which gains charges with, uh, when hit and gives you block and stun recovery, which is good being a max block character. Um, I've got a Quicksilver Flask, gain charges or you know charges when reach full and with extra armor if you can get gain charges when hit with when you're hit even better. Cinder Swallow, uh, make sure you get Energy Shield Regeneration instead of Life Regeneration or, or Mana Regeneration. Um, and also the life regeneration per second applies to energy shield because it's Zealot's Oath and the tree, and we'll talk about that soon. So really useful to have. And then for Delve, you'll need a Quartz Flask. And actually, I think I'll go out double up here with Armor Stacks. That's also a lost opportunity there. If you wanted to, you could switch out Quicksilver for Basalt, and that'll just give you more armor and make you even tankier. And that actually might be what I do moving forwards. But for now, this works for me for mapping and everything else. It's nice and fast. And uh, the gearing setup's pretty easy. Um, so let's talk about skill gems. Okay, skill gem setups. Uh, Helm, Determination, Defiance Banner, Discipline, and Tempest Shield. Reason why we run it in the Viridis Vale is we get plus two to socket of gems. Really important to remember that. Plus two to those gems means more defense stats across the board. Um, in my uh, wand, I use Desecrate, Spell Cascade, and then I make sure I have not got linked Flame Dash as well because um, it won't apply. And also Flame Dash you just have sitting on its own. Don't need to do anything with that. In the, uh, in the shield, I have Vitality, Molten Shell, and Clarity. Uh, and this is so I've got Mana Sustain and even more Life Regeneration. Uh, and we'll talk about the Watches I have in this build very shortly. Um, in the chest, I have Val Detonate Dead. I've got Awaken Burning Damage Support, Awaken Deadly Element Support, Ignite Proliferation. I managed to get a 2120 for this one, which is really cool. Awaken Unbound Ailments and Cruelty. All of these give you a stupid amount of damage and work really well. Um, so that's all for that. If you wanted to push this up even more, you could get a level 21 Val Detonate Dead, but that's super expensive. So yeah, and that would get you to 22 uh, Detonate Dead. Uh, in the gloves, I've got multiple totems, spell totems, wither and faster casting that handles my wither totems requirements. Um, and then in my boots, I've got Cold Snap, Void Sphere, Arcane Surge, and Casting Damage Taken. Now, arguably, Arcane Surge doesn't really proc a lot, or at all. Um, however, uh, Void Sphere and Cold Snap do, and it's on a level 11, level 2, and 2 setup. I could actually drop Casting Damage Taken, and that would probably benefit this build more, because you don't really need it. Uh, you, you would like to have it up as much as possible. So Cold Snap and Void Sphere um, are constantly popping non-stop. But as it is, it's working. But if you had it at like level 5, that would probably be even better. But that's it for the skill gem setups. Really basic, not a very hard build to set up. If you follow it exactly like this, it'll work. Okay, skill tree time. All right, so 
Basically, when you start, you will want to come up and grab Arcane Focus. You want to grab Searing Heat um, and Essence Surge. That's going to buff up your burn rate and whatnot. Um, now, I usually like come down here and, pardon me, every time I make videos, my nose starts getting itchy. I don't know why. Um, I usually seat here and just pick up these influence points here and reservation points here. Don't take Chaos Inoculation until you have your Aegis Aurora on, at, and that's about level 62. Then you'll come across, you grab Breath of Flames, you grab Deep Thoughts. Um, now, I do have uh, Watcher's Eye here, and bloody hell. I've always been a big advocate of Energy Shield Recharge. Um, it's fast to start times. I think it's a really cool mechanic that's unused. So I've actually got 20% here on Essence Surge, and another 38% here, and you get it on your... Um, discipline as well so that just means that your um your energy shield is recharging a hell of a lot faster than just relying on your recharge rate which is also really good and also with these mana nodes with deep thoughts i pick up the 12 percent mana reservation efficiency as well uh then i come across i grab unnatural calm i grab regenerate two percent of energy shield um now you won't get cluster jewels these come later on so we'll ignore these for now then I come across, get Shield Mastery, uh, and I also want to have 1% chance to block uh, attack damage per 5% block on Shield, and Arcane Guarding will buff up your Energy Shield, and then come down and grab Insightfulness, and if you need Might and Agility, definitely grab these, because this one's a little hard to balance the, um, the, the strength and decks. Then you come across, you'll grab Holy Fire. Now, do not take Zealot's Oath until you get to the point where you can actually run Chaos Inoculation. Then you'll take uh, Chaos Inoculation and Zealot's Oath at the same time. Then we come grab, we uh, down, we grab Sovereignty and the 8% increased damage uh, for each type of aura. Now, arguably, you could probably grab the 10% increased aura effect, and we'll just have a look and see what that does. So, yeah, it makes you way tankier. It's really, it, it's really up to, like, do you want more damage or do you want more tankability? So let's go tankability at this stage. But, you know, getting to your level 99 tree or whatever, you could switch that out or you could add that into the other node here because it's available to you anyway. Um, so that's also an option. Um, then you come down and you grab the spiritual aid and, and minion nodes because stacking minion damage still applies to corpses and their damage output. So, again, really good to have. Um, and you want to take the health nodes up in the tree because that's going to increase the health of corpses from my understanding. Maybe not. Anyway, um, then we come across and we grab Faith and Steel. We want to grab Recover 5% of Energy Shield over one second when you take physical damage from an enemy. This is going to just give you more Energy Shield regeneration. And then you want to come down and grab the Red Dream and make sure you've got Faith and Steel selected. This gives you the ability to generate Endurance Charges. Then we come back down further, we grab Divine Shield, Sanctum of Thought. This gets rid of Crit and then 10% of Physical Damage taken as Chaos Damage. So this mitigates completely 10% of Physical Damage taken. Then we'll come down, grab Glancing Blows, Shield Nodes down here, Expertise for more uh, Dexterity. Now, when you start doing your clusters, I picked up cluster nodes down here and got Vile Invigoration and Wasting Affliction. I also got a Corrupted Blood Immunity Jewel, which had like Fire Dot, which is how we scale damage in this build, increased um, maximum energy shield and faster start of energy shield recharge. It might be really interesting to have a look and see my energy shield recharge occurrence is at 73%, which is pretty good. Um, and then we come back up with our cluster jewel setup. Now, it will scale flat chaos damage, so that will work, just not chaos damage over time, because the output ends up being chaos damage. So, uh, Touch of Cruelty is just here because it's part of this node, but it doesn't affect this be uh, this build because we don't have a chaos spell. We're converting a fire spell into chaos damage, which is different to having a chaos spell. So then we have Unspeakable Gifts, which is how I get the uh, chaos pops. So enemies you kill have a 10% chance to explode, dealing a quarter of their maximum life as chaos damage. And so this is basically giving the Profane Bloom um, node to the Elementalist, so you don't have to play a Cultist. Uh, and then I've got Wicked Paul. Then I've got Brush with Death, Flow of Life. Flow of Life is a bit redundant, sort of. You could probably go with Vile, uh, vile Invigoration instead of that, but expense-wise... Um, now, burning damage will scale out this build, so you want burning damage nodes. 
So burning bright and fan the flames so you can get more enemies to catch a light with uh, elemental prol ignite prolifer pro proliferation. Um, and then also in here, I've got forbidden flame for ess essence glutton. And what essence glutton does is for each nearby corpse, you, re you and nearby enemies regenerate uh, 0.2 of energy shield per second up to 2%. Um, you also regenerate 8% uh, percent of energy shield over 2 seconds when you consume a corpse and 4% of mana, which is why mana sustain isn't an issue with this build either. Anyway, that's basically it for the skill tree, pardon me. Um, and so ascendancy-wise, first ascendancy will be Shaper of Flames. You'll then get Shaper of Storms. You'll then get Mastermind and Discord. And then finally, Heart of Destruction. So you get Convergence and bigger AoE. And boom, that's it. That's the skill tree. So this will be in the description with the POB and the POBB.IN uh, for anyone who doesn't have POB or plays on a Mac or anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the skill tree. Anyway, I, uh, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, aside from my nose getting itchy like usual. Um, pardon me. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up. Uh, make sure you check out the Discord uh, and please post in the comments, um, by that I mean. Um, make sure you guys check out the Discord. Uh, there's a heap of people in the Discord now. It's really good to see how everybody's interacting. There's a bunch of guys that are fielding a lot of questions in there as well. So we're helping out a lot of newer players, especially with Delve and stuff like that and their builds. Um, and yeah, there's also the Twitch. So check out the Twitch. As always, I'll be streaming on there like every night or every second night at this stage. I tend to be online almost all the time um, by level up builds. Anyway, uh, yeah, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. And until next time, stay filthy and have a good one.